Are you excited? It's Sunday morning. I can't wait uh, to see you again. Na linggo. Look at the person next to you. Tell that person, again, you look sexy this morning. It's Sunday. And if uh, you see uh, mga bagong faces, make sure that uh, you say hi to them and smile at them. Welcome to our series, The Power of One. Tell the person next to you, The Power of One. This is our uh, real-life discipleship series, and we are on our episode Five. For, ep- uh, for episode one, we talk about being part of a team. There's one power of uh, being one team, and that is Team Jesus, right? In episode, episode two, we talk about the great invitation. We are all product of one great invitation. Isa lang yung nag-imbita, right? Pero nandito tayo lahat. Jesus invites us to be disciples. In episode three, we talk about being fishers of men. That's our calling, to be a fisher of men. Last week, we talked about how to grow as a disciple or from being spiritually dead to being spiritually infant, spiritual child, spiritual young adult, and becoming a spiritual uh, parent. For this morning, we'll talk about the three keys. No? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, three keys. Susi, hindi, hindi tatlong halik. Three keys. Three keys to make a disciple towards a successful journey. No? Tatlong susi. We need keys no? para mabuksan ang isang bagay, to open something. But this time, we will use these three keys to uh, open no? uh, a gateway to a very successful journey. Let's play a game. Let's guess a trio. Now, are you familiar with this trio? Dagdagan natin yung letter. Hindi nyo pa makuha? How about this? Di pa? How about this? Tito Big and Joey. Galing ah! Uh, Dabar cards kayo ha? Ah. Nanad kayong itbulaga ha? Ah. How about this? Ang galing naman. Luzon. Visayas, Minda na, okay. Or Tita Minda. Yun ang pangalan ni Tita Minda. Luz Biminda. Alright. So, speaking of trios, eh, speaking of number three, we'll talk about three keys for this morning. No, to make as a, a disciple, uh, to make a disciple towards a successful journey. Because we want to make sure that our, uh, our journey to discipleship is successful. Alright. Let's have a recap. According to Matthew 28.19, 20, the first day, uh, the first episode that we talk about discipleship, church is successful when it obeys the command to what? Make disciples. The only time that the church will be successful if we will make disciples. Huh? I thought if we will make our building much bigger. I thought if we will invite a lot of people here and we'll have a party. Until we make disciples, we will not be able to reach success. Tell the person next to you, make disciples. Ayan. So, how about those the second Sunday natin? Matthew 4.19 gives us a clear, uncomplicated picture of what a disciple look like. It can help a church know if it is obeying the command to make disciples. Sabi doon, di ba naalala nyo? Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me means a disciple is committed to the mission of Christ. That represents the hands. I will make you means a disciple knows and follows Christ, the head of the church. And fishers men, being fishers of men means a disciple being changed by Christ. That is a change in heart. Diba? Sabi natin, if there's no change in heart, there is no born-again process. Because it's all the same thing. We look at the stages, no? About last week, we look at the stages of growth that every believer goes through on his, on his or her way to becoming a disciple who can disciple others. Remember this? 
how to grow as a disciple. Last Sunday, we talked about this. Now, what are the stages? So, we have started with being a spiritually dead person. And then we get to know Christ. We become a spiritual infant. We need constant attention, makes stinky messes, so on and so forth. And then we elevate ourselves. We grow to be a spiritual child. And then after that, we become spiritually a uh, young adult. But the different, this time we are more matured. We know Christ. We can feed ourselves. The only difference, doing the fifth stage, is being a spiritual parent. Parehas lang sila, but parent has a disciple. Maybe you are on your stage na nasa... You are nasa spiritual uh, young adult ka today, but God is calling you to be a spiritual parent. So you need to make disciples. So these are the five stages. Being dead, you become infant, child, young adult, and God wants you to become a spiritual parent. So di ba sabi natin, there was a quadrant where you started from the dead, characterized by unbelief because you doesn't know God. And then you become born again, Naging infant ka, characterized by ignorance, you know nothing. And then nag-grow ka, nag-grow, characterized by selfishness. You're a child now, then you become a young adult, characterized by service. You're serving God, you started to, uh, to be part of the church, part of the ministry, and then you become a parent, characterized by intentionality. This time, you are more intentional. You want to make disciples of other people. You see, a church is successful when everyone in the church is in the game. We agree with that? Sabi natin, we are part of Team Jesus. We're playing in a game. We don't want to be like a person na nanonood lang ng basketball game every Sunday sa may uh, Staples Center, but not playing the game. Why not play the game? Maturing into disciples who can reproduce other disciples. That's our goal. We just don't make disciples. We want to reproduce a disciple who will eventually... Make disciples. The reason why you are here, the reason why you get to know Christ, because there are people from the time of Christ who make disciples, who make disciples until it reached 2021, until we get to know God, and we were made into disciples, and God is calling you also. Do not stop the fever. Do not stop the game. Continue on making on disciples. Kasi ang dami pang batang tumatakbo dyan, no? Right? If they, if they, if we were, if we are teaching these kids how to make disciples through Malaya, how much more tayo mga adult, right? This Sunday, I'd like to uh, coach you from the why of disciple making to the how to disciple. Okay, so from the why to the how. So let's start with our uh, uh, fifth episode: three keys to make. A disciple towards a successful journey. I don't know with you, but for us, uh, for our family, we love to go somewhere. Especially every summer break, uh, Christmas break, winter, spring, summer, fall. Every break, at least we will go somewhere. No, uh, is sa mga favorite place namin, Yosemite. Have you been to Yosemite? Let's talk about Yosemite later. But for this morning, we have three topics for one successful journey. What is the journey? That is discipleship. First topic would be, we need to be an intentional leader. No? Our illustration would be being a driver. Our second topic would be, we need to have or create a relational environment. Our illustration would be a vehicle. Our third topic would be a reproducible process. Our uh, illustration would be a map. Na sabi ko nga, mahilig kaming pumunta kung saan-saan. Mahilig kaming maggala. No? And in fact, may mga kaibigan kami dito, mahilig ding maggala. We welcome you from Sacramento. No? Taga-Sacramento sila, pumunta sila dito. So galing sila ng San Diego. Kasi summertime yun, di ba? Sarap mag-drive, di ba? Tapos pag spring break, uh, fall and uh, winter break, diba? We love Yosemite, no? Yosemite is the place to be. Baga, ang sarap pumunta dyan kasi uh, you, ito sa Mariposa at ate, you see a lot of uh, things na hindi mo makita sa pang araw araw na buhay. But, enable for you to go to, uh, to reach that point B from point A, 
meron kang kailangan, di ba? May equation yan eh. For you to have a successful journey, you need to have what? A driver plus a vehicle plus a map for you to have a successful journey. Right? So, siyempre, ako ang designated driver namin. No? During those times, ako lang ang nagda-drive. Wala akong choice. Kahit sa kami pumunta, bawal akong matulog. Di ba? Lahat sila tulog, pero ako hindi pwedeng matulog. Dahil pag natulog kami, pag gising namin, lahat kami nasa heaven. Di ba? So, I need to be intentional. I need to be an intentional leader driving the vehicle. What do we mean by this? Number two, another need. We need a vehicle. No? This is our RAV4 na binili namin. Pagdating ko na, imagine, I came here 2009, July 30, 2009. July 15, we, brought, we bought this uh, RAV4. Oh, happy anniversary, RAV4. And after 15 days, imagine, coming from you know, the chaotic traffic of Manila, I was driving from here to Sacramento, do sa bahay nila. Imagine, five hours and six hours, bigla kang magdadrive sa unfamiliar place, right? Hindi naman tumatakbo sa Pilipinas ng 120 km per, per hour or 65 miles per hour. So, ang laki ng adjustment ko. But, it is impossible for us to reach a certain destination without a vehicle. Unless maglalakad ka, hindi na uso ang donkey or kalabaw ngayon, right? So, you need a vehicle. So, a vehicle will represent, sabi natin, the driver will represent the uh, being an intentional leader. You, as a discipler, ang vehicle will represent a relational environment. As an intentional leader, you need to create a relational environment. How about the map? When I came here in the States, uh, July 30, 2009, Pasibul pa lang yung Garmin, uh, Magellan. Inabot ko pa yung magpiprint ka sa Google ng map. Remember that? Pero hindi ko naman inabos yung Tom, Thomas, Thomas Guide ba yun? Si Pastor Bong tanongin nyo dyan, inabot niya yan. Di ba? Y- yung time na yun, inabot ko yung time na ang mahal-mahal pa ng GPS. Right? Ngayon, wala na yung GPS, pangsangkal na lang ng gulong. Di ba? <laughs> ang, ang GPS yung ngayon, si Waze na. Di ba? No? So, we need a map. Okay? It's in, lalo na if you're unfamiliar with the place. Lalo na dito sa Amerika, you miss one turn and then you go to the other state. Right? Map will represent our reproducible, reproducible process. We need a process na nag-reproduce for us to make disciples. So let's start. For example, pupunta tayo ng Yosemite. Yosemite would be our successful journey ng panawagan ni Kristo when He ascended to heaven. And sabi niya, huli sinabi, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yung ibig sabihin, kung ano yung sinabi ng Panginoon, kailangan natin tugunan. You see, a successful journey requires planning and preparation. Right? How do you plan? Pagka magbabakasyon kayo, Diba? You will list down the needs. Kailangan nyo ng gas, kailangan nyo ng saan kayo mag-stop, saan kayo iis, saan kayo kakain, lalo na pag malayo. No? When we drove from here, from California to, to Texas, to San Antonio, that was a long drive. No? So you need to plan ahead. You need to prepare. No? Especially in discipleship, you need to prepare. The pastors need to prepare you. The church need to prepare. And you being the driver, an intentional leader, you need to what? Ano yung preparations na kailangan mo? No? Well, a road trip cannot begin if someone doesn't turn the key, start the car, and drive. Kailangan nyo po ng ano, susi. Alright? Susi. Kailangan mo ng kotse kasi ang susi, hindi tat- ang susi, ang kotse hindi tatakbo pag walang susi. Eh, pastor, meron na ngayon dipindot eh. Eh, pero kailangan mo pa rin yung susi dahil kailangan niyang ma-, ma, uh, ma- what do you call this? Ma- ma-sense yung susi mo. 
You see, a driver with destination in mind is essential. Imagine you are the intentional leader, you are the designated driver, and you will be asked, saan tayo punta? Ah, nakasigurado eh. Malamang mababa ka, right? Pag sakay mo sa sakit mo, alam mo na kung saan ka pupunta. Being an intentional leader, you, you need to show and make your followers feel, lalo na yung mga disciples mo, alam mo saan ka papunta. Hindi ka clueless. Because nobody follow a parked car. As drivers, we don't drink and drive. Ibig sabihin, being a discipler, we must be intentional of not messing, messing up yung buhay ng disciple natin. Kasi meron kang make or break effect sa disciple mo. Pwede mong ma-mess up yung buhay niya or pwede siyang mag-grow through you. Right? In the discipleship process, we call this driver an intentional leader. Tell the person next to you, you are an intentional leader. Actually, God is calling you to be an intentional leader. The driver or the intentional leader has to drive the discipleship process toward the goal of making disciples. The disciple, your disciple, is not driving the discipleship process. You are driving the discipleship process. You must drive. Imagine, pumunta si Jesus dito at sabi niya, O oh, sige, anong gagawin natin? Magdi-disciple ako. Pero kayo ang mag-decide. No. Pagdating niya dito, buo na sa isip niya, intentional siya. He didn't go after the crowd. He went after the twelve. Intentional siya. No? Pinuntahan niya yung fisherman, pinuntahan niya yung tax collector. Very intentional. This driver needs some skills. Right? You cannot drive it if you don't have skills. And it helps if he or she has made the trip before or at least has a dependable map. An intentional leader, a driver, punta tayo ng Baguio, tara, sakay kayo. Teka, ba, tanong ko nga kayo, saan ba papuntang Baguio? Dadaan ba tayong Cavite? Ay, nako, bumaba ka na. Hindi niya alam papuntang Baguio kasi he hasn't been there. Right? If I am a leader, if I tell you to go, kailangan napuntahan ko na yun. Kasi kung ako rin, nangangapa, maliligaw tayong lahat. Imagine you are making disciple of a person, pero you are clueless of the Word of God. Because you're not reading it. You are clueless. Ah, next step natin, punta tayo ng church. Ano ba ang oras yung church namin? Because you are clueless of everything, and then eventually, your disciple will also be clueless. Let's talk about the vehicle. Having a vehicle is a must for you to be successful in that journey. And this represents the relational environment. What do you mean by relational environment? Relation, environment, two words. A driver, of course, must have something to drive in discipleship. The vehicle, the intentional leader drives, is the relational environment. So you, being called by God to be a driver, the intentional leader, kailangan may dinadrive ka. And that is creating a relational environment. Paano ba ito, Pastor? You see, relationships are what God uses to communicate His truth and help people grow. Seriously? Relasyon ang ginagamit ng Panginoon para ipahayag ang katotohanan niya at para lahat tayo mag-grow? Seryoso? Yes. Because that is the same modus operandi of Jesus Christ. He used relationship. No? So that He can tell the truth about the living God and so that He can help His disciples grow. You see, preaching the gospel to one another, the power of small group relationships, there is power in sharing, in creating a relational env- environment. Uh, Pastor, please be more specific. Ano yung relational environment na yan? You see, without relationships, kung wala tayong relasyon sa isa't isa, sa simpleng usapin, the journey of discipleship is boring and ineffective. Amen? Imagine, when I, when I, when I came here, my first problem 
is how will I promote discipleship in the future? When people, after church, started to leave, konti na lang natitira. Kasi if people will not stay, if people will not talk to one another, then it will be hard for me as a senior pastor to create a relational environment. You get it? Imagine if we will just go to church and I just know you by name, or not necessarily by name, I just know you by, hmm, familiar to ah, nagsisimba to sa amin ah. Pero I don't have really a relationship with you. No, never I talked to you before. Discipleship will never happen. Jesus, no, went to the riverbank or seashore and talked to Peter and the rest of the fishermen. Jesus talked to Z- 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 uh, Zacchaeus. Jesus talked to Matthew. Nandun siya. Nakikipag-relasyon siya. Pastor, be specific more in relational environment. We created the courtyard experience, right? Are you enjoying the courtyard experience? Now, before, sabi ko, ang problema ko, paano mapapastay yung tao? Ngayon, ang problema ko, paano sila pa uwi? Nalastress na, nandito pa eh. Because relational environment were created, not by me, but by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because how can you bring people together who doesn't know each other? That's impossible. Mahirap yun, unless the Holy Spirit will move. Right? And then we pray, we pray, we pray. Remember, Pastor Tim, we pray every Saturday, Lord, 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 please give this to us. And then people started to stay, people started to, to speak to one another, talk to one another, and now, no, we have many ministers were born, and they, most of you, magkakakilala na. Di ba masarap kung magkakakilala kayo? Nagkakatulungan kayo? O baka may binibenta ka dyan na kotse, bibiling ko na. O baka ma- nagkakatulungan tayo. O baka maglilipat ka ng bahay, tulungan kita. We have relationship. Church should be, no, supposed to be, we must have relationship. Right? Pastors are not to be known, well, we were used to be like, kilala ko si Father, yan yung parochial priest namin, pero kilala ka ba ni Father? See? Here's the thing. If kilala mo si pastor, pero di ka kilala ni pastor, delikado ka, wala ka sa relational environment. Your pastor must know you by your name. He knows what's happening to your life. He's praying for you every day. He's calling you. Text, ang kulit ka, no? Text ako ng text, ano? Makukulit ang kayo sa akin. Sabi ko sa inyo, magkikreate tayo ng relational environment because that is what Jesus wants. Because that can help you grow and know the truth about God. Without relationships, the journey of discipleship is boring and ineffective. We, are, we will be just a social club meeting every Sunday, happy to dance and sing for the Lord. But after that, we're done for the day. We need to interact to one another. We need, sabi natin, Let's make disciples of all nations. How can we do that if we don't know it? If we if we don't know each other, how can we how can we play basketball? Kung di tayong magpapasahan, kung di tayong magkakilala, right? We need to uh, to cooperate. We need to communicate. We need to coordinate sa isat isa. And I've seen yung work ng Holy Spirit, how He talked to the hearts of the people. Oh, I must serve. I must serve. In a, I saw the youth. No, Sabi ko, hindi naman lahat. Magaling kumanta dyan. Dahil hindi naman tumatawag ng Diyos ng singer. Ang tinatawag ng Diyos, worshiper. And I saw the heart of this youth. Nung mga kabataan natin, just, they just, they just want to worship. They just want to be part of it. And that is creating a relational environment. And usapan dito, tinatawag ka ni Lord to be a driver, to be an intentional leader. As a father, you become, you must be an intentional leader in discipling your wife and your children. Right? In your workplace, do not just go into your workplace and look for another Christian. Oh, I'm new in this place. Who are the Christians here? Oh, Christian Baptist, Pentecostal. Oh, every Wednesday, let's have Bible study. That God doesn't call you to call other Christians. Because imagine, you are calling other salt and light. Look for other people who are unbelievers here. I must identify them. I must shine the light of Jesus to these people. Kasi born again na yan eh. Ba't mo patuturuan? 
ang puntahan mo yung hindi pa Kristiyano. Right? Honestly, if other church will join us or if other Christians from other church will join us, I'm not that much interested. Bakit? Christian na sila eh. Right? I'm interested more for those people who doesn't know Christ. Zero knowledge about Christ. Because I can make disciples and I can uh, uh, kumbaga, introduce them to a beautiful relationship with Jesus Christ. It may be informative, no, having uh, uh, a church or attending a church, but it won't be life-changing unless we are part of the relational environment. You see, motivation can die because no one is there to celebrate a breakthrough or support support us as we struggle. Uh, diba ang sarap? No. Well, I'm telling you, disclaimer muna, this is a church. This is like a hospital. People who are sick go to a hospital. People who need God, people who are hurting, they go to a church, right? So, if somebody will hurt you, expect mo na yun, lahat nga hurt eh. Right? That's why you are being asked by God, be matured, become a, a spiritual young adult, become a spiritual parent. Okay, here's the thing. Di ba ang sarap? When you are part of a relational environment, and when you feel good about something, good news nangyari, Oy, kakasal na ako. Oy, nakuha ko na yung green card ko. Oy, ganito, oy, ganyan. Somebody is like cheering you up, happy for you. Diba? Sharing your joy. Ang sarap nun. Kasi ang hirap kung Facebook lang kausap mo. Diba? Happy me today. Diba? Wala kang kilala. Pero ang sarap yung totoong tao, totoong relasyon, and they are happy for you. O oh, diba ang sarap when you're struggling in life? When you face, may namatay kang kamag-anak, people will pray for you. People will embrace you. Because there is a relational environment. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, walang lone ranger na Christian. Right? We need each other. Relationships create the environment where discipleship happens best. Right? That's why after pandemic, we will launch the life grouping. Well, we already launched the life group of uh, uh, youth, uh, youth ministry. No, kapon, nag-k-barbecue sila. Bonded na sila. Wala na problema eh. May, may life group na ang women's. Ang men's will be on August 14. We will start with that. No? Pero ang gusto natin makreate yung tinatawag na geographical life group. There, there will be one in Valencia. There will be one in Glendale. There will be one in San Fernando Valley. There will be one in Japan or wherever. <laughs> diba? So, because... Relationships create the environment where discipleships happens best. Now, let's talk about the map. Ano naman yung mapa, Pastor? So, intentional leader ka, you're the driver, diba? Nag-create ka na ng, uh, uh, nag-create ka na ng, uh, ng, ng beautiful environment, relational environment. Kailangan mo ng mapa. The reproducible process. Paano to? The third component to a successful journey is a map or the reproducible process. Ibig sabihin, nagre-reproduce, na uulit, na duplicate. This roadmap allows us to measure a disciple's progress and teach the disciple, that disciple the route so that he or she can intentionally lead others on the same journey. When I was being discipled no, by a person is very much concerned no, about uh, my spiritual disciplines. No? During those times, wala pa nga texting, wala pa nga cell phone, beeper pa ang uso. No? He will beep me na, oh, uh, did you do your uh, seven minutes with God? Tinuruan niya ako yung seven minutes with God every morning. No? Reading the Bible at night na chapter by chapter. No, tinuruan niya ako uh, to, uh, to make sure na nag-church nag, nag ako every Sunday to be part of a young adult ministry, 
to be part of a, uh, uh, a Bible study on a Friday, no, tinuruan niya ako. Kasi kailangan niya ma-determine, ma-measure kung nasaan na ako. Nung nakita niya na nag-grow na ako, okay, pwede na. Di ba? Pwede ka nang bitawan. And then I'll move to another person and make disciple another person because God is calling you to make disciple also of other person. Jesus intended for his disciple making process to be reproduced. Wala pong nagnegosyo, no one entered a business venture without thinking of profit. Right? Magninegosyo ako. Magsiset up ako ng tindahan. Magpabibili ako ng maraming product. Tapos sa tanong siya, magkano ang tubo? How much is your profit? Kailangan ba yun? Kailangan yun. For this business, we need soul profits. We need to see souls entering the kingdom of God. Right? We need to see souls worshiping Jesus. Not worshiping you, not elevating you, but elevating the Christ that you introduced to them. When the twelve accepted him as the Messiah, remember the twelve disciples, he invited each of them to join a small group in relationship with him. Diba lagi sila magkakasama? No. Kasi ang, ang sabi ng Roman Empire noon, si Jesus rebel yan kasi he draws people. No, actually, he didn't went after the crowd. He just went for some people. No? And these disciples make a dent in the universe after no, after na nag siya sa heaven. As the disciples grew, ito mga disipulo niya, Jesus gave them responsibilities. Ha? Seryoso? Akala ko, yung discipleship masaya kasi nung una, inahatid niya ako, pinapakain niya ako, binilan niya ako ng Bible. Ang saya-saya ng discipleship. Me, 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 me. Ang dami kong nare-receive. Ang saya-saya ko, nagbabible study kami, nag-grow ako. Kailangan pala yun ng responsibility? Yes. There will come a time, your discipler will not pick you up anymore. <laughs> will not drop you up anymore. Because he needs you to buy your own car. Right? He wants you to grow. Before, na-realize ko, ay, pangit naman sa Amerika, 18 years old, kinikick out nila yung anak nila. At least sa amin, 40 years old, nakatira pa rin sa bahay. <laughs> sa kultura namin. And then I realized, pagdating ko dito, na-appreciate ko yung kultura nila. Because they just want their children to grow. Amen? So imagine that. No? Nagbulungan na yung kaka-18 lang ng dalawa. Eh. Sabi nila ako, alis na tayo sa bahay natin. Kaka-18 lang namin. Now, as the disciple grows, as the disciples grew, Jesus gave them responsibilities. You need to have responsibilities. In discipleship, you need to own your responsibility. You need to make your own disciple. Sa mugsa magsimula, simple lang. Invite one person each Sunday to come to church. Invite one person in a prayer to, with you. Invite one person in a Bible study. Just, eh, paano pastor kung hindi, kung hindi mag-oo? Okay lang, move on, make a list, invite person number two. Paano pag hindi nag-oo? Move on, go to number three. Pag nag-oo, praise the Lord. Diba? Move on to number four. Paano pag di nag o Move back to number one. Move back to number two. Right? Ganun lang. Here's the thing. Pag concern ka na, mag, na mare-reject ka na ayaw niyang pumunta, ibig sabihin, it's all about you. Right? Bakit ka apektado kung hindi siya pupunta? Eh, hindi naman patungkol sa ito. Hindi mo naman church to eh. Church to ni Jesus eh. Right? For example, oh, birthday halimbawa ni Tyron. In-invite ko kayo, hindi kayo pumunta. Eh, ba't ako apektado? Hindi ko naman birthday. Right? Did you see the point? Pag nag-invite ka, every Sunday, di ba, Power of One? Power of One series to eh. Ang sabi natin, our goal is what? To invite one person to this church. Wala kang pake kung matin o hindi. Pakailam yun ng Holy Spirit. Because you are not a Holy Spirit. Ang problema kasi, pipilitin natin. Holy, pilit ka na. Hindi Holy Spirit. Pinilit mo eh. ba? 
Hayaan mo siya mag-react based sa kanyang free will. Kasi darating ang time, pupunta at pupunta yan dahil tinawag yan ng Panginoon. Amen? Bigyan ko yun ng example. First day ko dito, pinicturean ko. Pak! Diba, Red, siya alam mo, sinend ko sa iyan eh. Diba, naalala ko, sinend ko kay Aileen yan. I mean, pinicturean ko itong church na to. There were only 12 people who are here. Because of power of one, look around. Tingnan nyo yung likod nyo. That's power of one. Because you invited Right? It's not because of me, not because of the pastoral staff, not because of the board, not because of the leaders, not because of you. It's because the Holy Spirit is working through you. And you own up to your responsibilities. Yan yung responsibilidad. Imagine yung responsibility ni Brother Noel, 65 people, 65 basketball players every Saturday. That's, that's not just playing basketball. That's discipleship. I tell you the truth. And I thank you, Pastor Ray, for stepping up. Amen? Amen? Nag-preach si Pastor Ray sa, ano, sa basketball ministry natin kahapon. And I'm so blessed because that's responsibility. Because God is calling you to own up your own responsibility. You see, you will not live with your parents until 40 years old, 50 years old. At 18, start making your own. Ganun din sa discipleship. Start making your own. Start looking for a person to disciple because you have responsibilities to God. In their ministry, he joined them and coached them. Finally, he released them to do the same with others. Jesus style. He coached them, he trained them, and then he released them. Diba? Simple. You coach, you train, release. Same thing with our children. We coach, we train, Release. Same thing with our sa office. Pag may bago, di ba? We coach, we train, release. No? We don't keep people. No? It's like SCMD. We need to share, we need to connect, we need to minister, and we need the disciple. No? We need, for, for the, for the, for the uh, uh, stages of discipleship or, or spiritual maturity, no? For spiritually dead, anong gagawin natin? We need to share to them. For spiritual infant, we need to share to them the gospel. For spiritual child, we need to connect to them. Right? Connecting. No? Communicate. Be with them. No? How about for spiritual young adults, we need to minister to them. We need to make sure that discipleship is being duplicated. And for spiritual parent, we need to teach them how to make disciples. Diba? Parenting. Kaya nga, importante ang women's fellowship, men's fellowship. Because older men, older women, are discipling the younger women, younger men. Ibig sabihin, you can learn from the experiences of others, from their mistakes, and from their triumphs. Question, who's my parent? Kilala mo ba yung magulang mo? Alam nyo, meron principle sa mundo, no? kung sino ka, Gal- sa, 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 kung saan ka galing, kung anong puno, yun ang bunga. Do you agree with that? No? In fact, when I was a store manager sa Jollibee, isa sa mga problema ko, at nagpag-iinit ng ulo ko, nang gigigil talaga ako eh. Dito sa mga, ano, yung mga rider namin, yung de-deliver, kasi am, ang dudumi ng bike nila. So, every day, nag-iinit ang ulo ko, pinapagalitan ko sila, linisin yung bike nyo, linisin nyo! Hindi, mag, uh, hindi mag-reflect ng tama yung kumpanya pagka ganyan, 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 ganyan. So, dumating sa point na pagod na pagod na ako dahil nina-high blood ako every day. Ano yung ginawa ko? Gumawa ko ng poster doon sa crew room. Bike mo, kamukha mo. O, di na ako, nag, di na ako nag-sermon every day. Kanya-kanyang linis. So, kikintab ng mga, mga motor nila. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi, it reflects them. Kinanti mo yung isang bagay na pwede nilang ikahiya. Right? Ganun din tayo eh. Gusto natin yung mga anak natin, the best there is, or better than us. Right? They achieve more compared to us. No, kilala niyo kung sinong magulang nito ang dalawang to? Are you familiar? Diba? They have their good looks, they have their, I think, artista rin sila, whatever. Diba? Kapatid nila ako sa labas eh. Tatay namin yan. Si... Yeah, anak niya yung dalawang yun. Diba? Eto, mga kapatid ko rin sa labas to. Kilala niya yung tatay niyan. Diba? This, this, these two guys are known to be rich. Right? And good looking. Because they got their 
being rich from their dad and their good looks from their mom. Right? So, same thing. Anak natin, kamukha natin. Kilala nyo ito? Di ba? Sininyo mulak? Kasi yun yung tatay niya. He's a dictator because his father was a dictator. Right? So, ibig sabihin, kung sino ang tatay mo, ikaw yun. Naku, paano na yun? Lasayin ko yung tatay ko. Di ba? Paano na yan? Yung tatay ko, uh, uh, babaero, naku po. Di ba? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ang tatay mo, si Kristo. Imagine kung magiging kamukha mo si Kristo. Amen? Same thing. No? Sa ating as, uh, as, uh, disciples' growth from dead to becoming a parent. In Acts 1.8, no, sabi ng Panginoon, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Ano ibig sabihin nito, Pastor? Ito na kasi sa Acts, yung first church, yung binasa kanina ni Sister, no? na first church after Jesus ascended to heaven. Sila-sila na lang, wala na si Jesus. This time, they created the first Christian church. Alright? So, sabi, niya, sabi ng Panginoon, you will receive power. Okay, the Holy Spirit were, became evident from that time on until now. Ano ibig sabihin to the ends of the earth? How will you share the gospel to the ends of the earth? You see, if you are watching yung Walk Through the Bible series, and explain natin doon palagi that, that Israel was divided into two kingdoms before. Yung north, para mas maka-identify na tayo, parang Luzon. Ang north, ang tawag doon, the kingdom of Israel, ang kanyang capital, Samaria. Okay? From the Samaritans, doon galing. Okay? Sa south, para maka-identify tayo, sabi natin Vesmin or Visayas Mindanao. Ang kapital niya ay Jerusalem. Okay? So, ito naman ang kingdom of Judah where David came and Jesus came. Okay? So, kumbaga, uh, pag sinabing to the ends of the earth, anong ibig sabihin? So, ibig sabihin buong Pilipinas yan. No? From home kasi, Ang kausap niya, nandun sila. Ito yung home natin. What, is God, what God is telling us is that we need to share the gospel and we need to make disciples starting from our home. Alright? Then to our Judea and Samaria, meaning our workplace, wherever we go every day. And then to the world, meaning the entire world or our community. No? Specifically for us, kasi we are not called to be a community church where we serve the community because imagine you are all not you are not all from here we are serving specifically a filipino ethnic community ethnic community okay so iba iba yung sistema unlike uh, a christian church alimbawa na shepherd of the hills they're serving the the community of porter ranch or san fernando valley but for us specifically we 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 serve the filipino ethnic community. You don't go here because this is an English service, because uh, you, you, uh, you know somebody, uh, because uh, this is a well-known church or whatever. You go here because of one particular reason. You know somebody here and you want a relationship in this church, right? As a church, what stage are we at? Di ba magandang question to? Kasi last week, we talked about what stage am I Am I a dead? Am I infant, child, young, young adult, or parent? But as a church, are we a spiritually dead church? Are we an infant? So we need to share. We need to connect. We need to minister. We need to disciple. As we end, I'd like to read in Binasa Kanina, the fellowship of the believers. This is what happened to the disciples when Jesus ascended to heaven. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. The apostles, kaya naka-red letter siya, being the intentional leaders. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. 
and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all. Naka red letter na naman siya. And any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. What do we mean by this? As we end, dinescribe dito sa Acts ni Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke wrote Acts. Aside from the Gospel of Luke, he wrote Acts. Sabi dito, through the apostles. No? Nagkaroon ng uh, magandang teachings, fellowship, ang saya sila na, nag-breaking of bread. Merong all came upon every soul. Ibig sabihin, ah, sarap ng feeling. Nararamdaman namin si Lord. Through whom? Through the apostles. Because they were the intentional leaders. They were the drivers. Now, it's your turn. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, it's your turn. Gusto niyong sumaya yung church natin? Gusto niyong wala na kayong maupuan? Let's all be intentional leaders. Amen? How about, anong ginamit nilang vehicle during those times? Anong kinreate nilang relational environment? Attending the temple together. Basic. Ang hirap na nga mapastay ng tao. Eh lalo na pag walang umati ng church. Right? How can we create a relational environment kung walang tao sa church? Right? As simple as that. So, automatic yun. Sabi nga ng isang radio station na client ko nun. Alam niyo yung Love Radio? Love Radio was my, uh, my client before. Ako yung nag-conduct ng team building sa kanila. Ako yung nag-conduct ng uh, leadership seminar sa kanila. Naalala ko lahat ng mga, ng mga DJs uh, those times. No? Sabi nga nila, ano yun? Uh, kailangan pa bang i-memorize yan? Are you familiar with that phrase? No? Kasi during those times, alam niyo ba, aksidente lang yun? Alam niyo ba ang nagsalita nun yung janitor nila? Kasi yung janitor nila, mahilig magkwento-kwento. Tapos, uh, nags- uh, nagsabi niya, ah, yun lang ba? Boss, kailangan pa ba? Hindi ko na kailangan i-memorize yan. Sabi niya, okay yan ha, sige, record natin. Then, patok, di ba? As, as simple as that. Kailangan pa bang i-memorize yan? Sabi mo sa katin mo, basic. Basic, umati ng church mag Sunday. Amen? Right? Basic. Kasi, walang relational environment pag wala tayo dito. Walang basic umati ng Bible study, ng prayer time, ng everything that the Lord will call us to worship Him. Now, how about the reproducible process? During their time, ang mapa na ginagamit nila, they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all. This is their reproducible process because they want to reproduce. There are selfless acts. They were sacrificing. Imagine. Wow. When I came here, March 1, 2020, I'm so excited to be part of this team. March 15, nag-close down tayo. Paano ko naman papasto rin to nag-close down? Hindi ko pa nga kilala yung mga tao. Tsaka, wala na. Paano ako sa sweldo? Eh? Wala nga tao eh. Right? Pero alam nyo, I'm so blessed to have a board of trustees who supported me all the way. Because they created a reproducible process. Tinayaan nila yung leadership ko. Sabi nila, let's do this. And now, we're reaping the harvest. Right? Imagine, if we will create a reproducible process, if we will become selfless, just like nung ginawa nila. Diba? Madali lang naman eh. Maging selfless. Nako. Parang, sinasabi ni Lord na i-disciple ko si brother ano. Ah, magsisimula ako. Bibilan ko siya ng Bible. That's being selfless. Ah, magsisimula ako. Every day, I will pray for that person. Chichek ko siya. Tatanayin ko ano needs niya. I will make him, help him grow with Christ. That is reproducible process. Cre- using a map to a successful journey. Now, as I said, we need three keys to make a disciple towards a successful journey. Imagine, magjo-journey ka na lang, ayaw pa maging successful. Right? Tsaka isa lang ang buhay. Tandaan po natin, mga kapatid, isa lang ang buhay. Pagdating mo sa heaven, hindi ka na magdi-discipleship doon. Hindi ka na mag-evangelize doon. Kasi lahat na evangelize na doon. Tsaka lahat dinidisciple na ni Kristo doon. Lahat na disciple na yun. Eh. 
hindi mo na kailangan yun. Right? Kaya nga, napag-usapan namin kahapon, ba't ka mag-retire ng pagka, tanda, 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 tanda mo na. Tapos pag-retire mo, mamatay ka na. Eh, sayang yung retirement pay mo. Mag-retire ka na maaga. Right? At gamitin mo yung lakas mo para sa Panginoon. Amen? Sabi nga nung namatay na kinukwento ko sa inyo, di ba? One more soul for Jesus. Eh, hindi na siya makapagsalita. Tinaas na lang yung kamay. O, oh, alam na this. Isang soul pa daw para kikri. Mamamatay na lang. Nasa isip pa, isa pa, Lord. Magtatangay pa ako ng isa para sa iyo. Sana, sa pag, pag, as we end, sana ganun din tayo. No? Every time we, we wake up sa umaga, magpasalamat tayo sa Diyos dahil buhay tayo, wala tayong COVID-19. At sabihin natin sarili natin at sa Panginoon. Panginoon, mahal kita. Salamat sa buhay na binigay mo sa akin. Salamat sa salvation ko. Pero one more soul for you. And I'll do that. Because there is power sa one invitation. And I will join Team Jesus because there is power in one Team Jesus. No? Sa umaga na ito, huwag niyong kalimutan, do not be afraid. Ask the Lord for courage. Make disciples. We are part of the Great Commission, not the Great Omission. Please do not remove the letter C. It stands for Christ. Amen? Sabi ni Billy Graham, salvation is free. Libre yan. Anytime, pwede matanggap. But, but, discipleship costs everything we have. From our time, effort, money, everything that we have. No? Nasaan na si Malaya? Naku, eh, sikat na sikat na ito. Si Malabote pa ito, si Malaya, sikat eh. No? May fan base na nga eh. From El Monte, nagsimula siya, di ba? Napunta ng, uh, ayan, binabasahan ng tatay niya. May action pa yan, tingnan niyo. Oh, yun yun, napabasa yung tatay ng, ano, ng Bible. Ano. So, napunta siya ng Glendale. Ayan, oh, di ba? Uh, ang, ang saya-saya ng mga bata, kasama nila si Malaya. Guys, that this man has been held, replied Peter. Tapos pumunta ng Valencia, di ba? Tapos pumunta ng Chick-fil-A. Uh, Adam E. Genesis 2. So this time, napunta naman siya ng Los Angeles. Itong week na to, no? bumili sila ng tinapay. Ano yan, bakery ba yan? Tapos, oh, nag-grocery si Malaya. Tapos nag-field trip. O, yun. Saan na nakapunta? Santa Monica yan, ha? Lakma. Bubuti pa si Malaya, nakapunta na ng Lakma. Ako, hindi pa, eh. Hindi ko pa napapasok yan, eh. Mukhang maganda dyan paggabi, ha? Maganda yung ilaw. O, nagpapoto up pa si Malaya. O, tar pits! Hindi pa rin na nakapunta dyan. Diba? So, mapuntahan nga yan. Ayan. So, dyan pumunta si Malaya. Tapos, and then, Jay, pakilagyan nga yan. O, Jay. Moses led the Israelites right. out of... Si Malaya, magkakaroon na ng kapatid si Makisig. Ba't natin ginagawa ito? No? Next, nalimutan ko palang i-post yan. May magandang ginawa si Gianna na video. In-explain niya ba't niya ginagawa. May, napanad niya sa Facebook. In-explain ni Gianna ba't niya ginagawa na alagaan si Malaya. And I was so touched. Grabe. Naiintindihan yung bata. Sabi ko, kaling mo Lord. Kasi nadali. Nadali yung purpose eh. Alam niyo ba, even si Pastor Greg, ginahanap na si Malaya? <laughs> so, bakit? Ba't natin ginagawa? Kasi we're teaching the kids to be responsible. May responsibilidad ka na mag-alaga ng kaluluwa. Si Malaya, walang kaluluwa yan. Pero they enjoy it, napapractice nila. Tinatawag ka ng Panginoon na mag-alaga at mag-disciple. Are you purposely hooked? If the kids are purposely hooked, how much more are we? Right? Are you part of my team? My team, Jesus. No? Are you purposely part of the team? Are you, uh, are you, uh, kumbaga, pinamumuhay mo ba ang power of one? No? As one team, Jesus, we are one team, Jesus, and there is power in one invitation. In fact, nandito si na Aileen sa si Mami, yung anak nila nag-invite sa akin sa church. Now, though, si Pastor Sandy was my first disciple. So imagine, no, nangyong ko lang na-realize yun. <laughs> so nandito sila ngayon. No? So imagine yun, 
how many people will give birth sa, sa, sa ministry nyo at sa discipleship process na ibibigay sa inyo ng Panginoon. So there's one power. No? Doon sa Team Jesus, there's one power doon sa one person that you will invite. Let us all pray. Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your message. Thank you for reminding us about the three keys, Lord God, that we need to remember. We need to be intentional because you designated us the driver to a successful journey. We need to be intentional leaders. We need to, uh, uh, to create a relational environment. We need the vehicle, Lord. Thank you for the courtyard experience. Thank you, Lord God, for the different ministries that we experience Great joy and love for you, Lord God. Together as one, no, we share grief and we share joy and a growing as one family. Thank you, Lord God, for the reproducible process. Thank you for the being selfless, Lord God, ng, ng aming team, ng aming mga members, because you were selfless, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your antidote to our selfishness is showing and modeling us your selflessness. We love you, Lord God. We glorify you in this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give the best clap offering for God in this morning.